Iobit Malware Fighter. We meet again. This review was requested by Iobit themselves, so I'll be taking a look at the full version, which now comes with the Bitdefender engine. Now, apart from that, they still have their cloud. And if we go into settings, we can see some of their other protection options. They have the digital online gene heuristic detection algorithm. By default, the protection level is set to medium, and that's how I'll leave it. This is the pro version, so it comes with all the bells and whistles. We have our network guard, file guard, startup guard, cookie guard, uh, process guard, and uh, malicious action guard which kind of sound like zero-day components. Then we have security reinforced, which sounds like a fancy word for self-protection, and we have USB disk guard. As you can see on the protection meter, it has the highest level of protection. Hmm. So we've got all the fancy stuff, although, you know, one thing I would like to mention is that I couldn't find any trial for the pro version of IOBit Malware Fighter. Um, I had to use the license which was provided to me by IOBit, so what I'd recommend them to do is, you know, release some kind of a trial, at least a seven-day trial, so that everyone can get their hands on such a product and test it out. Anyway, we're not here to talk, we're here to test. So let's get started. This is going to be a full review, so we'll start with the malware links. I've got eight links over here. Let's try them out and let's see how IOBit Malware Fighter Pro protects us. First of all, I'll do a little, you know, update check, as I always do. And I'm pretty sure we have the latest signatures. There you go. We already have the latest version of the database. So let's get started. Here's our first URL. Go ahead and run that. I'm not sure if this product has any kind of... Uh, web blocker but it does have a file blocker which is equipped with bitdefender signature so it should catch most of the threats as you can see this one is detected as genvarian grafter i can tell just by the signature name that this is the bitdefender engine we're going to remove that threat let's move on so threats removed here's sling number two we're going to try to save this as an executable. Let's try opening it. Seems like it opened just fine. I don't see any kind of alerts or pop-ups, so let's move on. Link number three, here we go. Whoa, looks like this one's dead. Um, it was alive just some while ago, but let's move on. Here's link number four, and this is some kind of adware, I guess. Setup 133. Whoa, this thing better not be like 500 megabytes. Come on, Mr. Adware, I haven't got all day. I don't see any pop-up from Malwarefighter Pro, so we'll see what this does. Meanwhile, let's try out the next link, henry.exe. As you can see, this is some kind of adware, and it's going to install something in program files, and I'll just click on some random stuff, which is what most people do, unfortunately. And now we have a pop-up from Malwarefighter Pro that something is trying to change our homepage and by default it is set to block. So that's what I'll do. King Henry is still on the way and is blocked. Bitdefender signatures do the work again. Let's continue. Here's a file with an extension of 123. Mm, I think I need to save it as exe. Because uh, that's what you do with malware files. And uh, this one's blocked too. Once again, the Defender signatures. Autorun.exe. One of the traditional malware names, you know, from like a decade back. That's what all malware used to be named. 
This one's caught some variant. I'm not sure what kind of signature this is, but uh, we'll remove the threat nevertheless. Let's move on. Selp.exe. Wow, that seems like a typo. I guess malware authors aren't very smart. Keep in mind we're using both the IOBit anti-malware engine and the Bitdefender engine. I do see something on the taskbar. Now we have a few process running. These are just PUPs I guess, nothing extreme. Hmm, I wonder what happened to selp.exe. I guess we have to do the second opinion scans to find out. Just before I was uh, about to run my second opinion scanners, it seems like IOBit has caught something else. So once again, I'll remove the threats. And it says one file was quarantined. Now we'll move on to the second opinion scans. Alright, our second opinion scanners are done. Hitman Pro detected three Trojans. One of this is just uh, the cached file, but it is active. And then we have uh, two registry keys, so not a lot. But then we take a look at Zamana, which has found a ton of stuff. Uh, it's a lot of adware, then there's a PUP, and then we have some malware as well. And then we have a couple of hollow process. Now, uh, you might be wondering what does this mean, hollow process, and why does it say repair? So, process hollowing means uh, when a certain program, or specifically malware, tries to use a legitimate process as a container for its malicious code. So, you still see it as a legitimate process, but the only purpose it's out there is to hide some kind of malware code. So that's basically process hollowing, and uh, it's really cool to see that Zamana has found that. Tons of threats. I'm going to remove these with Zamana, but before we move on, I'll take a look at Malwarebytes as well. Again, four registry keys. A couple of files. These are This is a bat file, and this is an INI file. And then this entire folder is classified as adware. Not too impressive, considering this is just the link test. It is not uncommon for products to get a clean sheet in link test, so needless to say, I'm not very happy with the results. Anyway, we'll, we're going to move on, we'll remove most of these threats, and then we'll proceed to the next stage. I just rebooted the PC after cleaning some of the threats, and it seems we still have some weird things going on. For example, the right-click menu has been replaced. This is really odd, but uh, I guess we're just going to move on. So now I'm going to disable the real-time protection and grab my malware samples. Now in here we have 835 malicious files. We're going to do a right-click scan and we'll see how many of these are removed. So this is the detection ratio test. Let's see how many it finds. Now this is using the Bitdefender SDK, so I do expect it to get a high detection ratio. Let's see if that holds true. So the scan and removal process finished very quickly. It says it has removed 840 threats. Let's take a look at um, our folder and see what's left. So we have three items left over. This translates to a detection ratio of 99.6%, which is very impressive. And uh, I guess it's down to the fact that they're using the Bitdefender engine along with their own engine. So the doubling up actually does give it a very good detection ratio. Now let's go ahead and run these three files and see what happens if their zero-day components can deal with the leftovers. Well, first of all, we'll have to see whether or not these files run at all. So let's just give it a go and see what happens. Open Candy, that's a well-known piece of adware. Danger 482, Danger 794, these are the two survivors that we're trying out next. And uh, that's that, I'm not seeing anything from IOBit, so we'll just let the system run for a while and then I'll do my second opinion scans again. Our second opinion scanners are done and uh, this time it is uh, a really good result. In fact, it's a clean sheet. Zamana didn't find anything, neither did Malwarebytes, nor did Hitman Pro. Um, these are just the Malwarebytes drivers. 
performance in the first section of the test was terrible, but in the detection and zero day part of the test, we are not seeing any infections. I guess that's largely due to the fact that most of the threats were removed in the detection stage. Now that is mostly thanks to the new Bitdefender engine that is uh, available with this product. This is definitely a big improvement over what I saw last time when I tested the free version of this product. But given that Bitdefender free antivirus comes with uh, web blocking and this thing doesn't and this is payware, I really see no reason to recommend it. So what do you think? Post your opinions in the comments down below. I hope you enjoyed this video and before I forget, a big thanks to Justin for becoming my very first Patreon supporter. Please consider supporting me on Patreon if you like the PC Security channel and uh, enjoy the content that I produce. You can donate as little or as much as you like and uh, we have some really cool rewards. There's some uh, really nice goals so do check out my Patreon page and consider supporting the PC Security channel. This is your host Leo and as always, stay informed, stay secure.